Hey everyone, and welcome back. And well, we love bikes, right? You love bikes, we love bikes, that's why we're here. But the bike industry as a whole, well, it's been a struggle the past few years, of course, due to the pandemic. And while we're likely going into another year of the same supply chain issues, bike shortages, in 2021, we still managed to showcase 80 new bikes to you all and review in detail 20 new bikes. So in this video, we're gonna showcase our six favorite bikes from 2021. We're also gonna share with you the top three bikes that were voted on by collective members, as well as touch on a variety of bikes that we're super excited about for 2022. Let's do it. So I'm briefly gonna talk about each one of these bikes, but if you wanna read a little bit more about them or watch my video review, you can find all of those details in the description below. First up is the Tumbleweed Stargazer and Logan and myself both reviewed this bike. And well, we had pretty good things to say about it and pretty similar things to say about it as well. And while we've tested similar bikes in this drop bar mountain bike category, the Stargazer definitely stood out. It's got all the mounting points you could ask for. It comes with a huge triangle for storage. And while the bike's geo is certainly not new to the tumbleweed, their proprietary steel tube set makes for an extremely comfortable and capable ride quality. And despite its stability, it was still rather balanced, having a rock solid climbing capability. The bike comes in two great looking colorways and overall has a great aesthetic to it. Logan enjoyed this bike so much that, well, he ended up buying his frame from Tumbleweed after his review. Next up is the Ripley AF. And among all of the trail bikes and full suspension bikes that we tested this year, the Ripley AF stood above all the rest. Virginia has been absolutely loving this bike and there's a lot to love. The Ripley AF is actually pretty similar to the Carbon Ripley. It climbs really similar, but it does come with a degree slacker head tube angle, which makes it even more agile on descents and cornering. And the aluminum frame, which is what AF actually stands for, might not be as light as the carbon sibling. However, this bike definitely comes in a much more approachable price point. Next up is the Tanglefoot Moonshiner that Joe Cruz just tested. And oh boy, this thing is a looker. And sure, it might be hard to overlook that skyscraper above the head tube. It just might be a great reminder that many of the best riding all mountain bikes don't have to bend towards being in a hurry. The Moonshiner can handle it all. Dirt road, single track, abandoned double track, craggy passes, and everything in between. Joe mentions the Moonshiner rips on both day rides and bikepacking trips, and it just might be the best rigid bike descender out there. Next up is the Atso Fenrir, and not too many bikes are optimized for both drop bars and flat bars, but that's what Atso did with the Fenrir. Logan has been riding the stainless steel rigid bike for a couple of months now and has plenty of good things to say about it. The snappy and supple steel bike has a clearance to run plus tires, comes with reversible dropouts, and a variety of other features that make this a fantastic bikepacking forward rig. I personally really think that's a great idea developing a bike around drop and flat bars. But what do you all think? Would you get a bike like this so that you can swap out stems and bars to change its riding characteristics? Next up is the Salsa Cycles Timberjack. And yes, this bike made our list last year, but it got a complete overhaul and one for the better. The much improved geometry is built around a longer front center, making it a much more sure-footed descender while not taking away too much of its climbing capabilities. The aluminum frame has a really nice ride quality and it feels even better loaded down. The bike also comes with Salsa's Alternator Dropout 2.0. The Timberjack not only comes in a variety of great looking colorways, but they also maintained a great value throughout their build kits. I don't know about you, but I feel like the best bike for getting into bike packing is an aluminum hardtail and making sure it's at an approachable price point is important. And I think Salsa did that. But what do y'all think? What's the best entry level type bike out there. I'm curious to hear your thoughts. Let us know below. The most road oriented bike in our 2021 top bikes definitely belongs to the Fairlight Farron 2.0. And despite the 77 millimeter bottom bracket drop, the bike still begs to be pedaled off road. Thanks to the plush and responsive tube set. The comfort of this bike is very noticeable. And despite its high end meticulously considered design, the bike's price point remains very approachable. Plus, it comes with all of the fixings for your next bikepacking trip, mounts, 
dynamo routing, and of course, a very large frame space. So those are our top six favorite bikes of 2021. But again, this year, we asked every single one of our Bikepacking Collective members what they thought of each bike that we reviewed in 2021. And if you're interested in voting next year, you can do that by just simply signing up for the Bikepacking Collective. The Bikepacking Collective is bikepacking.com's annual membership, which not only allows you to vote for the Bikepacking Collective rewards, but it also includes a bunch of benefits, including this right here, the Bikepacking Journal, which is shipped to your door twice a year. For more information on the Bikepacking Collective, there's a link provided below. So 500 members ended up voting, and here are those results. First up is the, well, Tumbleweed Stargazer. That seems to fit the mold of this year. That bike is truly amazing, and well, the people have spoken. Next up was the Kona Sutra ULTD, and I tested that bike this year, and I actually had quite a bit of fun on it. The ULTD is similar to the former Sutra LTD, but now has internal dropper routing and slight geo changes that give the bike an even more mountain bike feel. Still, it's a versatile bike that can do everything from carving up your local single track to tackling multi-day mixed terrain bikepacking expeditions and, well, much more. And last was the Y-Cycles El Jefe. And this is a bikepacking specific pro model from Y-Cycles that was built in collaboration with Hefe Branham, who of course is known for setting records on the Colorado Trail, as well as the Arizona Trail. The bike is made for going fast, pedaling efficiently, and keeping pace, but it's a backcountry hardtail at heart, and it's a really good one at that. Of the many bikes that are going to hit the market in 2022, or so we hope, here are six of the most interesting bikes for some reason or another. The 29er Cro-Mag Surface Voyager, which was the Cro-Mag Surface, was completely redesigned, and wow, does it look fun. Not only does it come with some very aggressive geometry, but it also comes with some bikepacking centric features, including external cable routing, horizontal sliding dropouts, plenty of mounts in the frame, and on the top tube and rear rack mounts. And maybe one of the coolest things is, well, it comes in five sizes, and one of those sizes is a medium large. Similar to that Tumbleweed Stargazer Extra Medium, this is really awesome because for me, I feel like I always fall in between a medium and large. And when you make a medium large or an extra medium, well, it makes the decision making that much easier. The Drop Bar 700 slash 650B Pelago Stavanger was redesigned in 2021 and it received a variety of updates this year that definitely make it a better bikepacking option. They dubbed the bike the off the hook, off the grid, do it all machine for the human being. And it certainly fits that bill with increased tire clearance, a variety of mounts, and massive frame space for whatever you wanna put in there. Next up is the Ibis XE, and this is pretty sweet. It's a carbon frame. It's built around a 100 millimeter rear end, 120 millimeter fork, but Ibis did something a little different with this rig. Besides the fact that it's built in the United States, which is pretty cool, the DW Link equipped full suspension bike comes with size specific seat tube angles to help ensure a proper fit no matter what size rider you are. And despite that odd looking front triangle, which obviously will help with standover, each size fits two water bottles within the frame. So for folks like me that really just love long day rides, having two water bottles inside the frame and none on your back is a win. 29 plus is not dead. And perhaps the Steyr Grodinger OMG is just what we needed in our lives. I'm sure many of you saw my video of is 29 plus dead. I did that video because there was a variety of bike brands that said goodbye three inch tires, goodbye, three inch tire clearance. But the Grodinger OMG allows plus bike enthusiasts to rejoice. The new made to order steel hardtail is built around no suspension and three inch tires, be it 29 by three, 27 five by three, or 26 by three. And the customizable geometry is pretty rad, especially for an eight to 12 week lead time. The Mason Raw, another steel hardtail, got extensive feedback from the Mason team and also ultra endurance athletes, Josh Ibbett and Angus Young. Mason says the bike is modern and progressive, which to me means there's no tiptoeing down any chunky terrain, which obviously is a good thing. And we love that idea in a bike packing bike, especially when it's loaded down. We can't wait to get on one. Just recently launched a few months ago, the Rocky Mountain Element. 
got a complete redesign. And the minute I saw it, I was like, wow, look at all that frame space. But in reality, once I dug deeper, I looked at it and the biggest change is four degrees of head tube angle. It became four degrees slacker, which for a cross country bike is a lot. The element, while still dubbed an XC bike, seems to be leaning a bit closer towards the trail category with these new geometry tweaks, which kind of excites me, not only for those day rides, but definitely for more sure-footed bikepacking. And bikes built around, say, 120 millimeters of rear travel and 130 or 140 millimeters of front travel are truly the best capable bike out there. If you're looking for a bike that can travel long distances, handle the climbs just fine, and not take away any descending capabilities, that's it. So I'm truly hopeful that we can test out the Rocky Mountain Element for you because it looks fantastic. So that about does it. So I wanna hear from you all. What bikes looked great in 2021? And what bikes are you keeping a close eye on for 2022? Leave a comment in the comment section below. As always, thank you all so much for watching. And until next time, pedal further.